What I have here is a cathode ray tube, and this cathode ray tube um, basically is uh, having some current run through it with a power supply that I have over here. And unfortunately, I have to stay zoomed in for you to be able to see what's going to happen here. But essentially, the uh, cathode ray tube has a positive connection on one end and a negative connection on the other end with a large potential difference between the two ends. At this end of the cathode ray tube, um, there is, well, there's a metal plate inside that is somewhat curved. And this curved metal plate is coated with a phosphor coating. And that phosphor coating will glow when it's struck by electrons. Uh, in essence, what we're doing here is we're making this end be negatively charged, and so we're producing excess electrons down here that will, because of the large potential difference, travel down um, to the positive end, which is over on this side. Right in here, there is a, a slit in the metal plate, and what happens is as the negatives come off this end and traveling in this direction, they'll either strike the metal plate here and be absorbed, or if they're going in just the right direction, they'll make it through that slit. And when they're traveling down in this direction, some of them will strike uh, after going through that metal slit. Some of them will strike down here, some will strike more in here, and some will strike more out here because of the curved nature of this plate. So you essentially have a, a, a parallel plane of electrons coming through here, some of which strike here, here, or here, just depending on um, where they are in that plane, if they're closer up toward the camera or further back toward the back. So I'm just going to turn it on just so you can see what it looks like. Now because of the camera um, and the sensitivity of the camera, it doesn't really look as much like a beam as it does in real life. But you can see that essentially down at the left hand side there is a beam and then it seems to spread out a little bit as you can travel to the right. What I'm going to do here is to um, control the beam, what I have is just a regular bar magnet that has a north end and a south end on it. And if we remember, the north end has magnetic field coming out of it, and the south end has magnetic field coming into it. And so essentially, um, if I hold the magnet this way, the field is traveling in that direction. So if we have a beam of electrons that have a velocity in this direction, and we hold a bar magnet behind it with the north pointing toward you, which direction should the electron beam move? And if you recall, this is a, a force equals Q V cross B kind of problem, but because we're talking about negative charges, we have to make sure that we use our left hand. So we have the velocity of our charges in this direction, and if I hold the north such that the field is coming out toward you, we should get a velocity uh, curving our fingers into the direction of the magnetic field and our thumb will point upward which means that the direction of the force on the charges will be up. So let's try it. So what you see in that case is the beam literally does move up and again that's because we're influencing the the uh, particles as they travel along because of the magnetic field. Now I'm going to turn the bar magnet so that the south is pointing toward you, and that should just reverse everything, so now we should see the beam go down. And you'll notice that the closer that I move the bar magnet to um, the cathode ray tube, the more bending there is because the strength of the field is higher. So hopefully this uh, demonstrates the idea for you, and now you've seen a real-world example of steering a beam of electrons with a magnetic field.